Welcome to Option Trades Today. I'm Tony the Bat Batiste, and I've got a trade idea for you today. March 9th, 2023. Let's see what the market's doing first, as we always do. Even the S&Ps are down $3.25. Got a little divergence in the market. NASDAQ up $40. And bonds trading down five ticks to 125.06. Remember, as bonds go higher... Yields go lower. Bonds catch a little bit of a bid here. Yields are going a little bit lower. Why am I talking about bonds and yields? Well, we're going to take a look at some banking stocks today. So I thought it would be uh, important for you to understand that. All right, so what are we going to look at here? I always go to my high option volume, and I'm always looking for uh, usually uh, setting it up with IV rank from high to low. Today, I did a little something different for you. I went to net change, and I just happened to go to the downside. So if something is lower, I'm typically looking to buy it. Now, just because a stock is down doesn't mean it's going to go higher the next day or anything else like that. But you got to look at what it has done in the past. Yes, we look at charts, even though people say we don't. I'm looking at charts for um, where a stock has been not to where it's going. All right, let's take a look here. I'm talking about KRE. Look at this stock down $3.54. You got a big move here. You also have a one day, uh, five day uh, index change, uh, meaning what has it been doing over the last five days? Volatility's actually been going up and it just upticked to an IV rank of 31. Very hard these days with volatility that's forward slash VX over here on the left-hand side, uh, trading down at 1965, just about one of the lower uh, places it's been uh, throughout the year. You know what? Let's throw a chart up of that while we're talking about charts. We'll take a look at it. So here's volatility. So volatility is going lower. Market's going sideways uh, for the most part over the last couple of weeks as volatility has been going straight down. Here is the market that's forward slash ES. You can see the market's been going sideways as of late and volatility has been going straight down. Let's put volatility back up there. So finding it very hard for people like me looking for high, uh, IV rank stocks. Now we'll get back to KRE and we'll get to that. What is KRE? KRE is the regional banks. Now look at what's been going on here. It's making a new low. Um, KRE has a uh, correlation to the overall market um, that's about 78%. Well, 0.78, not really 78%. It's 0.78, 100 being uh, or 1.00 being the highest or completely correlated. 0.78 is pretty high. Now, as I've done with these last few trades in, in Microsoft and others, I'm looking for something that has high implied volatility relative to the overall market that has a um, big correlation or positive correlation to the market and trying to benefit from this recent down move uh, in the banking, the regional banking stocks. Now, a lot of these are smaller stocks. Let's take a look at what some of these smaller stocks are. Um, if you take a look at it, I was, thought I would have it up here for you. Every time you click on something, it shows you or it keeps it up here. So if you wanted to go back quickly to something, you could get right to it. All right, let's take a look at some of those stocks. Some of the top holdings in KRE um, is CMA. Um, it has just about 2% um, of KRE is uh, CMA, mostly 2%, just about all of the stocks I'm going to show you. Here's CMA. You can notice it's back up there now on the platform. Uh, EWBC, uh, East West Bank Corp. Uh, again, these are smaller regional banks. Um, uh, this is a $10 billion uh, bank. Uh, FI, I'll do one more for you. Uh, FITB. Uh, another uh, regional bank that's Fifth Third uh, Bank. You can see here that they're all going down as KRE is going down, down obviously, because KRE is made up of all of these stocks. If I want to go back to CMA just to take a quick look at it, I can click right from there. A nice feature on the platform that maybe you didn't know about or didn't know how uh, to use it. All right, let's go back to KRE. Uh, you'll notice KRE has, the, has um, a decent... Ivy rank around 31. Some of those regional banks that we looked at 
um, also had higher IV ranks relative. Um, but I like the smoothness, or at least the expected smoothness, of having many stocks like an ETF, this is an ETF, will provide you as opposed to just the one individual stock. So what am I looking to do? We always do the same thing. We always go to the closest to 45 days in the monthly options in the monthly options. That's where I am right now. Um, I'm going to take this from a small um, bullish standpoint because the stock has gotten beaten up so much. No other reason um, than that. I'm looking at for a little bit of price reversion and maybe even volatility reversion, which is volatility is more mean reverting than the price. So let's sell a little bit of premium in here. I left the open interest up here for you because you can notice a lot of times people say, well, there's so much open interest on one strike or the other that that's where we're going to pin to. And look, there's no volume on some of these others. Well, these options were just um, created as the stock went lower. So that's why the open interest in here is um, is so light in those stocks. All right, so what am I looking to do? You know me when it comes to these type of stocks. I like to put on a very high probability trade. I usually use a ratio spread. That's what I'm going to do now. If I'm bullish on a stock, I always go to the put side um, for the ratio spread. What am I looking to do? I'm looking to buy one of the 52 puts and sell not one, not two, but three of the 50 puts. So I'm going to change my quantity down here uh, to three. There you go. And it looks like it's trading for around a dollar seven. I did it at a dollar four. So you can do it better than me. Now you'll notice that some of these markets are um, a little bit wide in here, meaning 75 cents, 78 cents, 124, 128. Uh, so they are three or four cents wide. So sometimes you can't get filled right at exactly mid price. You can see the natural price here is 97 cents. And if I was trying to buy it, it'd be 110. Mid price now is 102. I did it at 104. I don't think this is a trade you have to reach for, um, but let's take a look at what this trade um, looks like. Okay. So you've got an 86% probability of success. You got a delta of positive, positive 31. You got theta decay of three and a half. And you got a beta weighted delta of five. That's beta weighted delta to SPY. You've got five. Now, uh, we looked at it a moment ago um, being correlated. It is highly correlated. You would expect that number to be as high as it is. Now, the buying power is almost $1,400. Now, um, I listen to and watch all of the um, comments that you put on here, and I've got a nice Twitter comment. Um, you know, on a trade like this, why don't you just sell? Um, a naked put, which you could do. Now let's go over this for a minute. Now my break even is 48 and a half. We're going to do a little bit of a of a of a lesson here on on how options are pretty much priced um, perfectly. Like there's no free lunch, and I'm collecting um, only a dollar four on my trade, approximately. That's what I got for mine. But remember something: the max profit on this trade, because I'm long one of the 52 puts and short one of the 50 puts. I know I have three down here, but just bear with me for a minute. I'm long this put spread one time. What could it go to? It's a $2 wide put spread. It can go to $2 if, which is unreasonable to ask for, the stock expires at expiration. We don't do anything at 21 days, which you know that we will look to close this or roll this within 21 days. But you could make $2 plus the $1 and change that you got here. So I could make a total of $3. That's my max profit on this trade on the $1,400 in buying power. So what could you do? Well, you could look um, to sell just one of the 51 puts. Uh, why do I say one of the 51 puts? Because that gives you approximately a dollar, right? I'm trying to get what I would expect to make on the trade I just showed you. I wouldn't expect to make $3. I'd expect to make a dollar or so on that overall trade. So if I'm going to sell these puts for around a dollar, my break even is 50. So my break even um, is higher, um, but I'm using less buying power. So if you wanted uh, to, to get it closer to our max profit, you'd have to go up to two or three contracts. Now, two contracts gives you $1,500 in buying power. So I'll keep it buying power um, neutral here. You're collecting around $2 uh, in premium, um, and you have a 78% pop. Your theta decay is pretty close to this, and you're just about using the same amount of buying power. One other thing uh, you could do is go down, well, bat, why do the 51 puts? Let's look at a different put here. Let's do the 49 puts. And if you're going to collect around a dollar on the 49 puts, um, you'd have to do two 
of those puts. Now you're using around $1,100. So there are different ways to look at the same trade. I like the one by three or the one by two um, that I normally do on this show as opposed to just the naked put because of that extra little kicker um, of being able to make more money on the trade if you decide to hold it and the better break even on the overall trade. Even this one has a break even of 48 and a half if you're doing uh, just one contract. All right, I'm Tony Batista. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you uh, liking and subscribing to our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, that's the Tasty Trade channel, the uh, Tasty Live channel, and of course my podcast that you're watching this on. I appreciate all your support and I do look at all your comments. So please leave me a little note down there, something you'd like to see or something you didn't understand. I'd love to explain it to you. Also, do me a favor. Open up an account at tastytrade.com, not tomorrow. Do it today. Move your account for another brokerage firm. That's how we keep the lights on here.